STL2 2 inhibitors are, are, I think, really one of the breakthrough classes of medications that we've seen in the last few years that are, of, of course, targeting diabetes care, lowering blood sugar, but have very nice beneficial effects on cardiovascular events. This particular class of medications, I think we've seen consistently that there's a lowering in cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization rates. And I would emphasize the heart failure part of this because uh, we do see that quite consistently. And it doesn't, uh, shouldn't surprise us that uh, that that would be the case because people with diabetes are at risk for heart failure uh, because of the diabetes and their associated risk factors. But um, uh, these, uh, these drugs specifically cause diuresis. Um, and we know that that's their mechanism of action. We know how they work in the kidney uh, to, to um, increase uh, urine flow, increase the, the loss of glucose in the urine. Um, and so it shouldn't surprise us mechanistically that we would see a particularly strong signal in heart failure. We haven't seen a consistent signal with uh, atherosclerotic type of events. Um, and I think uh, that remains an open question as to whether there is a class effect here that's restricted to heart failure. But there are a number of different interesting pathways that are, uh, that are postulated uh, that could be mechanistically important in also uh, driving the reductions in cardiovascular death that we've seen fairly consistently uh, in these drugs as well. Now, we always wonder with new classes of drugs, is there truly a class effect or are they agent-specific effects? Again, I think what we've seen mechanistically is heart failure is consistent atherosclerosis not consistent, and even in one of the drugs, um, there is a, a concern for an increase in amputations, which would probably be an ischemically mediated or driven uh, mechanism. So I think more to learn, but uh, this class of drugs is clearly here to stay. Uh, it's a particularly safe way to lower uh, blood glucose, it seems. Um, some side effects, particularly of urinary and genital infections because of increased glucose in the urine. But, um, but overall, I think, um, if our dual goal is lowering blood sugar <clears throat> and uh, improving cardiovascular events, uh, this should be a really nice early on the list adjunctive therapy for managing our patients with diabetes. The GLP-1 compounds, I think, you know, that's a maturing story. We're not quite all the way there. Of course, they're working on a different pathway. In those drugs, we do seem to see a little bit more of an effect on atherosclerotic events and not so much the effect on heart failure. I think given the different pathways, sooner or later, someone's going to do the trial where we actually give patients one of each and we see if we get additive benefits of both atherosclerosis reduction and heart failure reduction. It'll be an interesting thing uh, to find out. Um, uh, but I think, you know, it's a very exciting time because until just a few years ago, uh, all of the diabetes medications were at best neutral for cardiovascular disease, helpful for microvascular events, but sometimes harmful for the macro cardiovascular events that we see in, as cardiologists. So to have now two drug classes that in our armamentarium that seem to be working on unique mechanisms that seem to be uh, fairly safe and that are actually reducing different types of cardiovascular events, uh, I think uh, promises a bright future and we need to know a little bit more.